What's up guys, Coach Matt Pippen here, and today I'm going to show you two easy exercises to start opening up your chest. Now why is opening up the chest important? Well, we got a bunch of reasons. Number one, having chest flexibility, aka mobility, for your shoulder is super important. If you can't move your arm back like this, you're lacking shoulder mobility, which will eventually become a problem. Number two, postural stuff. Everyone's you know terrified of the dreaded forward head here. There's a lot of things that go into that, but one of the big one is your pec tightness. Now, you can do all the rows you want to think that you're going to open up your chest, kind of what we used to do. That is not going to cut it. We're going to have to do some kind of stretching, but then also some isometrics in there, and that's kind of where the money is. So we're going to do this two ways, because we have two major pec muscles. We have the big boy, the big pec major, which is the guy that everyone sees when you do like a chest fly, but then we have his little brother, the pec minor, which lies underneath it. They have different insertions, different origins, so we have to have two different stretches to attack both those guys. So I'm going to show both ways. Um, the first one, we're going to be actually in a door jam. So I'm going to hop up right now, go find yourself a nice door jam where you can put your arms like this, and I'll meet you guys over there. Alright guys, we have made our way to a door jam. Hopefully you have one of these. Other things you could possibly use would be like a rig. You just gotta basically have a way to make sure, one, this isn't that wide, because I wanna make sure that I can get my whole forearm and elbow on both sides, and then sink into this. Now, if you can only have a spot where you can only do one arm at a time, that's totally fine. It's just, for time purposes, I would probably do it with both arms, right? So, we're gonna go stretch the pec major. So that's the big boy that kind of think of like a big triangle here, right? We wanna open this up. So keep that in mind as we go into the stretch. Like this is where I should feel this. I shouldn't feel this in my bicep, shouldn't feel it in my neck or anything else. One other thing to think about is we tend to, when we wanna open the chest, that we wanna get in this hyper extended position. You're gonna hear me say that multiple times. Just think like, blow your air out. And so if somebody hits you in the abs, like you would be okay. Or if I'm extended and they do that, I'm gonna probably cough, right? So. You want your elbow pretty much in line with your shoulder, and then you're gonna slowly put one foot out in front of you, and then start to lean forward. Now look, I already lost my rib cage, so I gotta tuck my tailbone, blow my ear out, and now sink into that stretch. So we're just kind of hanging out, literally and figuratively, trying to just relax into this. Ideally, you'd wanna do this for at least 60 seconds. If you can go for longer, awesome. Uh, for time purposes, we're just gonna kind of speed this up. So imagine we have stretched this, okay? And as you start to breathe and relax, you might sink a little bit deeper and deeper, and that's totally fine. So we're gonna do two isometrics here. Do not move, I'm gonna hop out of this just to show you. We're gonna drive both our elbows forward like this. Like imagine you're on one of those like pec deck machines and you're doing this. That's the motion we're gonna do. Think like the force is coming through your elbow and a little bit of your form. You don't really want your hand to do anything here, all right? Now once I'm here, Envision I'm trying to pull this here, so I'm squeezing that in. So let's start together. We're in that stretch, don't come out of it. You're gonna start pulling forward, feeling your pec in its stretch position is now contracting. Start like a two out of three out of 10. We're gonna do this for 20 seconds. If you've been doing this a while, you can turn up to like a five. If you've been doing this a very long while, you can turn up to like an eight or a nine. Just be smart. We're slowly building that intensity, feeling that pec trying to shorten while it's in a stretch position. Okay, we're gonna relax. It's been about 20 seconds. You might be able to sink deeper. Check in with your ribs and your pelvis. Make sure they're still connected. Now, the hard part, don't move. You're gonna try to do this. It's not this, it's this. So it's the opposite movement. So if you feel like you're trying to lift your elbows off the walls, it's a little tricky, but try not to move your body, and you're gonna feel like you're squeezing those arms back, and you should feel kind of like the back of your shoulders, maybe a little bit of shoulder blade stuff, but try to get more back of the shoulders, okay? Because that's, that's kind of what the opposite of the pec major is. So we're gonna start to lift that. Don't go too hard, too fast, so you might cramp, and just feel that stuff. Let's go for 20 seconds. So just feeling that, trying to like, I'm trying to lengthen my chest. Another good cue is feel like you're trying to open that triangle, make this triangle longer and bigger. Keep going. And it's been about 20 seconds. Go ahead and relax. Sink back into the original stretch. Hang out for like 30 seconds, and then we'll do those isometrics one more time. In a perfect world, you should kind of feel like, all right, I'm a little, this is a little bit more comfortable. I can either go deeper or the stress feel or the stretch feels less intense. It's usually what happens after your first round. Okay, round two. Once again, we're driving 
forward with the elbow form, not the hand. Feel that pec start to contract, nice and easy. If you're a beginner, start at like a three, and don't go any higher. More advanced, you can go five or a seven out of 10. Once again, we're doing that for like 20 seconds. This should just feel weird. I mean, it's just, nobody, unless you've been doing this a long time, like training at your end range is just strange sensations. Keep going, keep going for five, four, three, two, relax, sink, check in with your pelvis and your ribs. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go backwards. So we're trying to go away from the wall with your elbow, not your hand. And you can just go all out, feel the back of the shoulders contracting. Keep going, feeling that back, kind of back of the shoulder doing its job. It's like I'm trying to just pull myself deeper into this chest opening position. For five, four, three, two, and relax. Don't move, just sink deeper in the stretch. If you gotta change your feet up like I just did, totally fine. And just make sure where are my ribs and where are my pelvis? Like make sure you're not in that hyperextension, all right? So ideally we wanna sit in this stretch for a good minute you almost want to think of like, this is what we've worked so hard to do is to get into this position that I've never been in before. This is where the money is, all right? We're almost thinking of it as like the reward. All right, so for time purposes, we'll assume we just sat in that stretch for like a minute to a minute and a half. When you go to come out of this, you're going to feel raw, like in your shoulders, your chest. It's, it's like you, the, remember the first time you ever did lunges and your legs are like, whoa, what is going on here? Kind of the same thing. It's a new stimulus. You're going to slide your arms down the wall and start to kind of push yourself out. And then from here, what I like to do is just kind of squeeze my chest, close the joint. Ah, it feels good. It's a nice sense of relief. And then I'm going to turn sideways for you guys. But just think like I'm opening it, crossing it, opening it, feeling that chest, crossing, trying to move your spine too much. We're not doing anything scientific here. We're just kind of bringing our arms back to life. So just a quick recap. 60 seconds to two minutes stretch. Feel this open, this triangle getting longer and longer and longer. That's the pec major. Two sets of isometrics, we're driving forward, nice and easy for 20 seconds. You relax, try to squeeze back for 20 seconds, relax for like 30 seconds, back in the new stretch, do that isometric one more time, sit in the stretch, then come out nice and slow. And that is how, guys, we open up that pec major. And now, I want you guys to go back to the floor, because now we're gonna get into the pec minor. So I'll meet you guys there. All right, guys, so we just got done doing the pec major stretch, now we gotta go after the pec minor stretch. Now you are gonna need a little bit of equipment. If you got two yoga blocks, those are gonna be great. You could probably use towels as long as you fold them up. You're just gonna need something and you'll see here in a second to give us this access to this position. That'll make sense here in a second. So the difference is, is that when you're pec minor, he's attached to your scapula, which is your shoulder blade. So we gotta do something that not only gets the arm, the shoulder bone back, kinda like we do with the pec major, but now to get our scapulas to come together. So this is gonna feel very different than what we just did, all right? So this is gonna take a little bit to find this setup because my flexibility is different than your flexibility, but as long as we're feeling the same stuff, that's what matters, all right? So first you're gonna go face down on the floor. And what we wanna do is get into this position where my fists are kinda of underneath my elbows. So right here, this would not be a big enough stretch for me. This might be a big enough stretch for you. You might even have to be here if your pecs are really, really tight. As long as we're feeling this nice kind of stretch through here and then almost kind of down, almost near your armpit. So I need more, so I'm going to put this guy here, put the other guy there, let my head rest. And all right, now I'm starting to feel like a nice gentle stretch in that area. We want to sit in this stretch for at least a minute. If you can go longer, that is awesome. Two minutes would probably be more optimal, but if you only got time for one minute, that's fine, especially if you're a beginner. So once we've done our stretch, we're going to start doing those isometrics. So the two isometrics are, first one is you're going to push down into the ground like you're about to do a push-up. Don't do a push-up, though. Don't move. You want to push down. We're going to start like a three or a four out of ten intensity. We're going to do that for 20 seconds. So we've been stretching for a while. Round one of the isometrics, start to push down, and you're gonna to start to feel what was being stretched is now contracting, and that's where the money is. We wanna get stronger in that lengthened position. So we're pushing down. If you've been doing this for a while, you can now turn it up to like a little harder intensity, like a six or a seven, but don't rush it. 
So we're pushing down, feeling all that good pec minor work. We're pushing, pushing, and now we're going to relax. You should notice that it's easier now to be here. But now, here comes the hard part. We're going to do the rails contraction, which is we're going to try to engage the stuff that pulls us into this position. Envision your shoulder blades, okay, those, those um, scapula in your back. Try to pull them together to make your hands as light as a feather on the blocks or the floor, whatever setup you're in. Try not to use your neck and extend your upper back. Everything stays still. And just try to squeeze those shoulder blades together. Another good cue is think like you're driving your elbows towards the ceiling. We're going to do this for 20 seconds, and you can go pretty aggressive with this as long as you're not going to cramp. Don't use your lower back and don't use your neck. Let's go for five more seconds, for four, three, two, and then you'll relax back into the original stretch. Now, for most people, you would probably just stay here, but if you feel like, oh, I don't feel a stretch anymore now, manipulate the blocks or whatever you're using to go get a deeper stretch. If you feel like you need it, don't be in a rush to do that, but all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't really feel this that much anymore, then make your adjustment. Now we're gonna go do round two of the same exact isometrics. So we're still in that stretch. Round one, we're gonna to start to push down into the blocks. Another good cue here is think like you're trying to push those shoulder blades forward and like down into the floor. So we're pushing. If you're a beginner, start at like a three. If you're a little more advanced, you can turn it up to like a five, six. If you're really advanced, you can turn it up to almost like your safest maximum effort. Just be smart here, feeling that stuff. Once again, we're going for 20 seconds. We're going to relax, kind of sink back into that original stretch. Now we're going to do the second isometric. This is the one we're going to try to make your hands as light as a feather on the blocks. By trying to squeeze those shoulder blades up, try to squeeze the elbows up. Don't use your lower back, don't use your neck. And let's do this. You can go pretty aggressive here for 20 seconds. We keep squeezing, trying to make my hands. It's like I'm pulling myself deeper and deeper into this stretch. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing, keep squeezing. And relax. Now in a perfect world we would sit here for another minute to two minutes and it's almost the best way it was described to me is like this is where the money is like we've worked so hard to open up these new ranges but now I'm in a range that I've never been in before and that's kind of what the goal is. So you want to like don't be in a rush to get out of this. Now if it's uncomfortable back off a little bit but like stay here a little bit enjoy this stretch and then once we go to come out of this it's going to feel a little raw, especially if you've never done this before. So you're going to get up. Don't freak out if your arms and your shoulders feel a little dead. We're going to bring them back to life with a very simple drill. So from here, I would kind of like slide my hand off, move that block, slide the other hand off, move that block, start to come up. You can do this next thing standing or sitting. It doesn't really matter. But just notice like this is, we did some work, right? So hold your arms out in front of you and just kind of squeeze across and then open, pull those shoulder blades together, squeeze across, open, just do two more here. This isn't something scientific, we're just kind of like bringing our arms back to life. And then now you should just start to feel like, hey, we did some work there. We attacked that pec minor with this particular uh, stretch and isometric sequence. Alright guys, so you now have two strategies to open up those pesky little tight pecs. We got to take on uh, to the, the pec major, and then we just did the pec minor. Start working on these guys a couple times a week and start getting all the gains that come with opening up your chest. That's it for today, guys. Remember to be strong, be mobile.